So in this lesson, we're going to open up this batch of topics by talking about the concept of a scatter plot. Basically, we have two groupings of data, which are kind of like what we call paired data. So we, we take a survey, the age of different kids. So we have a child that's one year old, a child that's one and a half, a child that's two, a child that's two and a half, and so on. So we have uh, kids that are different ages, and we measure their height. So the height of the one year old is 29.4 inches, the height of a 1.5 year old or one and a half year old is 28.2 and so on. So we're asking ourselves the question, are these two sets of data related to one another or are they just random? Well, it kind of makes sense that as the age of a child increases, the height uh, of that child should also increase. Now we're not saying that one causes the other. We're gonna talk about that later, but we just wanna, at this point, just see if there's any kind of relationship. We're not talking about what causes something else or if there's any causality is what we call that. We're just trying to see if there's a relationship. So the easiest way to do that is to plot this data in what we call a scatter plot. So what we're gonna do is draw, and we'll do it freehand here in this lesson, but in, in, a, in a few sections from now, we're going to do it on the computer and we'll get really good at interpreting the results. Basically, we have uh, a graph, an xy plane, and this is what we call the x-axis, and this is what we call the y-axis. You should remember some of this from, from algebra. Now, we have to figure out, what did we put on the x-axis? Um, well, what we have to do is, is, first of all, we have to see if one of these variables could possibly be influencing the other one. Uh, and that's going to dictate which one of these goes on the horizontal axis. So the, the, the one that's probably, influ if there is any kind of an influence, then probably it's the age influencing the height. Um, and not the other way around. I mean, you wouldn't say that a child is 29.4 inches tall, therefore he must, that, that, that is the reason that, that he's a one-year-old child. No, it, it, if there's any kind of causality at all going on here, any kind of relationship, probably the independent variable is this one right here. So we want to figure out which of the two probably is the in independent variable, and in this case it's going to be age. Notice that I'm not saying that we've proven that. I'm not saying that there is any causality here at all. We're not saying that age causes height or anything like that. We're just saying that probably age is the independent uh, variable that's, that's uh, uh, going to be on the x-axis. So we'll go ahead and put over here on the y-axis the other guy. And this is in inches. And so we want to go ahead and plot these two things. So along uh, the age axis, we have ages from 1 to 5 years old. So we're going to, going to put 1, 2, three, four, five, and we'll label them one, two, three, four, and five years old. And then for the height here in inches, the height here in inches, uh, we have 29 is our low value and 40 for our up value. So we'll go ahead and just mark this as 30 inches here. And over here we'll have 40 inches. And here we'll have 50 inches. It doesn't have to be exact here in this particular section. We're just getting started. So now what you want to do is you want to you look at this as paired data. So the one-year-old child was measured to be this number. The one-and-a-half-year-old child was measured to be this number. So you treat this as an ordered pair, just like algebra, x comma y. So here we've labeled the independent variable. And I'll go ahead and write that down. This guy we're labeling to be the independent variable. And this one uh, we're going to label it to be, for this at this point in time, we're going to label it to be the dependent variable. And the reason they're called independent dependent is because it's possible, at least, that the height of these kids is dependent upon the age. So it's dependent, but notice that we haven't proven that. There's a whole thing that we're going to talk about called causality and what causes what in statistics, and we're not there yet. But anyway, we're labeling this as the independent variable. So one comma 29.4. So here's 1 comma 29.4. It's going to be right below the 30. So let's go ahead and mark that. We're just going to put a dot here. And then we go to the next point. 1.5 has a corresponding height of 28.2. So over here 1.5, 28.2. Notice this one goes down a little bit. Okay. Then we have a two-year-old at 33.7. So two, we'll call that just above 30 here. Uh, we don't have to be too exact for this example. Two and a half at 34.3. Two and a half at 34.3. That was a little bit higher. And then three at 35 even. Three is right smack dab in the middle at 35. And then three and a half at 37.5. 37.5 is going to be up here. And then we have four at 39. So just shy of 40. I'm eyeballing in here. 
and then 4.5 at 43.9, almost 44. So that's going to be a, a, a nice jump up here. And then the last data point we have is five-year-old measured to be 45.8. So we go up here, 5 comma 45.8. And there we are. So you see what we have. This is what we call a scatter plot. Now, for a scatter plot, you do not connect the dots. Okay, this isn't like a, a coloring book or anything. We don't we don't connect the dots. We actually don't want to to connect the dots because we don't want to be influenced. We don't want to be drawing conclusions by connecting the dots. But we are going to generally be looking at the data and trying to figure out what relationship exists. And specifically, the kind of relationship we're looking for is a linear relationship. All right, if there's any kind of linear relationship, then at least it's possible that this age variable and this height variable are related. If this data were totally random and all over the place, and we'll do an example in just a second to show you that, then you would say there's no relationship. But clearly, as one of these variables, the independent variable, increases, the height, the height also increases, and that makes, means you're going to form a line. Now, sometimes the line might be steeper, and sometimes the line might be shallower, but you're just looking for a line. And of course, a line cannot be drawn perfectly through all of these points. That's okay. You're just trying to see as an eye, you know, we're going to put numbers to it later, but just as an eyeball, does a linear relationship exist? In this example, yes. So we're going to say down here there is a linear relationship. A linear relationship exists between these two variables. Later on, this is going to roll into the concept of correlation. We're going to define correlation mathematically, but basically we're saying that these two variables are correlated, and I'll explain what that means later. That just means they're related to one another. Notice the word correlation has the word relation in it, so they're related. And the other thing that's important is for you to notice that this guy is slanted up and to the right, so we call that a positive slope. A positive slope. You might want to refresh your memory back of algebra. When you have a graph of any two variables, if the line slants up and to the right like this, we call it a positive slope because rise over run, remember that from algebra, rise up, run over this way is a positive number. It's a measure of the slope. It's always positive when the line slants up like that. And I'll show you an example of a negative slope in just a second. So this is an example of a scatter plot. You treat the data as xy pairs. You label one axis the, as the independent variable down here uh, along the x-axis, and the dependent variable, the one you think could be dependent on the other one, you don't know yet, but could be, you label it the y-axis, and then you just plot the data, and you try to see if there's a linear relationship. If there is, you note that there's a linear relationship, and if it slants up and to the right, you say that it has a positive slope. That's about all I want to say about that particular example. Let's go and see another one. Okay, now we're still going to be talking about kids because they're easy to talk about. Let's look at the age of children versus the class size um, at a school. You might say, well, that's a weird thing to compare, and it is. But let's just take a look at what the raw data is. Let's say we have a preschool that we visit, and we go and say, well, uh, the one-year-olds, all the one-year-olds in the school are in a class and there's actually seven of those kids in a class. That's what we say class size. So we visit, you know, Miss Perkins down the hall. She's got the one-year-olds, and there's only seven of them in there. That's the class size of one-year-olds. All right, now we go down the hall, and we find the two-year-old class, and we figure out that there's a lot more kids in that class. There's 14 children that are two years old in the two-year-old classroom. And then we go down the hall, and we find the three-year-old classroom, and we see that there are, again, only seven children there. And then we go down the hall again, and we say, Here's the four-year-old class, you know, Mrs. Smith down there. She's got 15 kids. And then we go down here to the five-year-old, so we're almost a kindergartner. This is, I guess you could kind of say this is kindergarten age. And there are eight of those children in there. So again, you want to find out if these two sets of numbers are related. Ultimately, we're going to be talking about correlation, which means are they related to one another? Specifically, are they linearly related to one another? So what we have to do is guess at which one of these might be the independent variable and which one could be the dependent variable. We don't really know, but we're going to call age to be the independent variable and class size to be to see if we can find a relationship where class size would be dependent upon age. Uh, so what we do is we want to plot that. So we're going to put the age variable down here in the independent uh, variable area and class size. Uh, here on the y-axis. So those are my coordinate points. And again, my ages go from 1 to 5. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to label this 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And my class size looks to range from 7 
up until 15. So the way I'm going to handle that on my uh, axis is I'm going to say this is 5, this is 10, this is 15, this is 20. And again, we're just sketching these now. Obviously, the graph doesn't have to be that important for, for the purpose of what I'm trying to get you to understand. So we're going to take this as a pair of numbers because the one-year-old is tied to the, the number seven kids in the classroom and the two-year-olds are tied to the number 14 because that's a number of those. And so these are paired data values, right? So one comma seven. We go over here, one comma seven, that point's gonna be about right there. The two-year-olds are at 14, so the two, we're gonna go just shy of 15, that's gonna be a point right around there. Three comma seven, is going to be back down here, even with the other point we had, and then four comma 15, we're gonna go four, we're gonna go a little bit higher than we were for the other point, that's gonna be a point there, and then we have five comma eight as our last point, so five comma, there's 10, so we're gonna go just down below 10, something like this. So this data looks totally different than the previous example. Now, I wanna point out to you that the Smarty Pants watching this video might say, well, this could be a linear relationship going through here. And I, I grant you that it's possible, okay? But if there's a line going through these points, then these points are really far from that whatever that line is. Compared to the previous problem here, you see how everything was tightly packed. There's a line that goes through here somewhere. We're going to learn how to plot it later. But it, if there is a line that exists, these points are actually pretty close to that line. So that's why we say this is a, a linear relationship, because it's pretty obvious that there's a line that goes through there that gets close to all those points. Now, you could be a smarty pants and say, well, there's a line that goes here, but in reality, these points are, if there is such a line, is really far from it. So if there is any kind of linear relationship there, it's really weak. More likely, this is completely random. Uh, this is just random, basically. Uh, dots all over the place. Because... Look at it this way. We start off with the age of one. And here is the class size there. Then we go to the age of two, and it pops way up here. Then we go higher to the age of three, and the data drops again. Then we go to the age of four, and the data goes up. And then we go to the age of five, and the data goes down again. So it's like this up, down, up, down. It's like the stock market, right? It's, it doesn't look like it follows a general pattern where you increase one of these, and this guy increases. Or if there is any kind of correlation there or relationship there, it's really, really weak. So what we really want to write down here is we want to say that there is no evident pattern. Pattern. So we don't want to say there's no linear pattern uh, that we can really tell, at least without stretching things a little bit. And so that's what that's going to kind of look like. Now let's go off and do one more. Uh, that will be interesting for you to see. Let's take a look at the age of kids, just easy to talk about, versus the number of diapers. The diapers per day. So how many, uh, whoops, that's a D, A, Y. How many diapers per day are we changing for these kids? Okay, obviously when you have young, young, young kids, you're changing lots of diapers. When you have five and six year olds, you're not changing any diapers. So let's take a look at what the data says that we recorded. So we go and look and we take a sample from a one-year-old and we realize and we count that he's uh, having three and a half diapers on a given day that we take this data. And we go and look at two-year-olds and they this two-year-old has two diapers in a day. Then we look at three-year-olds or this particular three-year-old that we're sampling 1.4 diapers for this guy and then the four-year-old that we look at 0.7. That means that he's not even having a diaper on some days because he has less than one diaper per day on average. So some days he's actually not having an accident, some days he is. And then the last number, the five-year-olds, uh, for the, for the five-year-old that we talked to, he didn't have any diapers. Of course, there are some five-year-olds out there that, that still you know have an accident, right? But for the one that we talked to, there were none. So again, we wanna identify an independent variable which we're gonna call age again, and we're gonna de de define the dependent variable, the one that could possibly depend upon the other one. We don't know yet, that's what this entire class is about, is figuring out if there's correlation between two variables, and if so, how much, and all of this. So we're gonna call it age, and we're gonna call this diapers per day. Okay, and then we have ages from one to five. So this is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three three, four, five. And how many diapers do we have? We start from zero, we go up to uh, about four. So we'll call this one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now we plot our data. 
this is a pair of data points, 1, 3.5. So 1, 3.5 is going to fall right around there. 2, 2 is going to be right here at 2, 2. The next one, 3, 1.4 is going to be right around here. So 4, 0 0.7 is going to be right around here somewhere. And 5, 0 is going to be down here. All right, now what do you think? Is there a linear relationship or is there any relationship between these two variables? Well, it looks like as the age increases, the diapers per day goes down. And it looks like, just as an eyeball, that there is a line that could possibly be drawn through these. Of course, it can't hit all of these points, but it's pretty close. These three to be look to be almost exactly in a line. And if you thread a line through here, these are not on the line, but they're pretty close. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for general patterns of data. We'll learn how to calculate it numerically in just a few minutes. So in this case, we want to say that there is a linear pattern or a linear relationship just subjectively by looking at it but the difference here is this guy does not have a positive slope it has a negative slope right negative slope now remember back from algebra as I said in the previous section positive slope goes like this negative slope goes like that so if you see data sloping down into the right doesn't matter how steep it is, if it's really steep or if it's really shallow. It doesn't matter. If it's sloping down, like going downhill, down like you literally can roll a ball down this hill, you say it has negative slope. The reason is because the rise over run is negative. The rise is down, which is a negative number. The run is to the right, which is positive. When you go back to algebra and you calculate rise over run, you have a negative number in there, and that makes it a negative slope. So we say here that there is a linear relationship or a relationship between these two variables. And later on, we'll say that there is a correlation between these two variables. And we'll learn how to calculate the number, the value of the correlation, which will tell us numerically how correlated these pairs, pairs of data points really are. Now, one more thing I want to talk about before I close is just a summary because it is very important. So I'm repeating myself a little bit. So the summary is when you have scatter plots, which is really the title of this section. There's really only, uh, well, there's more than three possibilities, but there's three main possibilities that I want you to be aware of, okay? You can have data points that more or less look like this, right? So you see how what's going on here? There's a linear relationship between these two guys, and it's slanted up and to the right. So this we call it linear relationship, positive slope. Right? The other possibility that we have, that we just had just a minute ago, was we have something that looks like this. I'm just kind of totally sketching this by hand. Right? So in this case, we have a linear relationship, but we have a negative slope. Right? And then we have one final thing that we typically are going to be talking about, and that is the most fun. That's when you just kind of have random data just all over the place. All right, just something like this. So you can't really, would the line go this way? Would the line go that way? Would the line, would the line go this way? Who knows? It looks totally random. As I march to the right, I don't see a, an obvious pattern into what's happening. So what you write down, no pattern. Or you could say no relationship, no evident relationship. Later on, we'll say that there's no correlation between those two variables. So that's it for this section. We're, we're easing ourselves into it. We're talking about the concept of correlation, later on regression, which is kind of uh, tied into it. But we start out with the concept of a scatter plot. It's just an XY plot where we take two values and plot them, and we just look for patterns. Is it linear? Is it positive? Is it negative? Make sure you understand this. Maybe do some of these yourself. Follow me on to the next section. We're going to get a little more detail on this, into this topic, and then finally we'll be calculating the correlation between two variables. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.